Why don't I wear this, you know, more? Hello. Welcome to Sailboating with Sophie and Annette. A series about offshore sailing brought to you by Catamaran Supply and inspired by... Rum Swizzle. Our friends Annette and Willem started Catamaran Supply when they were preparing for their first offshore crossing and after they became frustrated with the marine supply options out there. Having a hard time finding the right information and fair prices, they knew there had to be a better way. And Catamaran Supply was born in January 2019. Catamaran Supply is a modern marine supply store to shop, learn and come together as sailors. The goal is to create a marine supply business that promotes sharing DIY knowledge, sustainability, inclusivity and brands that create high quality products. Catamaran Supply, modern marine supplies for sailors by sailors. Hello everyone, Willem and I would like to offer one of you a gill sailing jacket, so stay tuned for details at the end of this video. Two months ago, Anna joined us for an Atlantic crossing from Bonaire, which is really hot, to the Azores, which is a lot cooler. Before you came, we had a long conversation about how you should pack for this trip. And so we thought that this could be, gosh, I need to remove this, sorry, the right time to talk about sailing fashion. <laughs> so let's start with shoes for hot weather and shoes for cold weather. Mm -hmm. This is what Annette and I like to wear. So are you ready? One, two. Well, uh, Crocs are super easy to slip on, slip off. They are, they don't skid. So you can be very stable in a pair of Crocs and they protect your toes from the hazards of walking on a deck. Uh, with that said, this is the last time I will definitely be buying a pair of, of actual deck shoes. So I opted for these, my first deck shoes ever. They actually ended up being great and they were super comfortable, super easy, put them on. They, I actually never got stinky in them, so that's a plus. Another type of shoe that I really liked having when I was sailing in Sweden with Ryan were uh, slip on, slip off for inside of the boat. And this is my latest pair. Yeah, fluffy slippers. That's cute. It gets really cold walking in the boat inside of the cabin and having yeah. slippers is definitely nice. And you don't glide all over trying to go from point A to point B. So those are my, this is one. Those are my, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. No, they smell, they smell good. I know, I'm joking. These are mine. So I bought my pair of boots in 2016. Uh, they're still amazing. They're a bit expensive because euros but to my knowledge those are the only sailing boots that are non-skid that let the foot breathe mm -hmm. and that are super warm and stay dry they are absolutely amazing so it is a bit of an investment but sailing through cold climates and doing a lot of offshore sailing this is definitely the boot that has kept me going and i'm super super sensitive to cold so those were like mm. Okay, so now we're going to talk about warm weather offshore. Yeah, let's go from Bonaire north. Imagine we're sailing in Bonaire, the sun is shining, it's really hot outside. Beautiful blue water around you. You can do no clothes. Cute. I mean, what? <laughs> we brought the clothes, right? Like we're here to learn how to pack. I like shorts that are very comfortable, super stretchy in a material that is resistant. This pair is from Icebreaker. It's in it's a blend of merino wool. Nice. And so those never get smelly and it's Amazing. really, really nice. Okay, so sailing offshore in warm weather, I mean obviously you're gonna be wearing shorts and t-shirts, but stuff that you should definitely not forget are a good pair of polarized sunglasses because it is so bright out there. Uh, Definitely 100% a hat. I cannot see through those sunglasses, so I'm not gonna keep them. And uh, sunscreen. Oh yes, sunscreen. Sunscreen, very important. So keep that with you because the sun is out there. Next, we are going to night watches. And so on night watch, what I personally like to wear is a light pair of pants. Mm -hmm. And I have hiking pants for that that I am currently wearing. So we are doing this. Those are my nice lighter hiking pants that I bust out for night watch. Also wear a nice sweater, a fleece. Yes, I, I like something like easy like this that I'm wearing. And on that note, actually, a blanket is preferred in the cockpit. Yes, absolutely. So an, the absolutely necessary item to have on a crossing is a nice, preferably as big as possible we both fit in it. blanket oh, that you can so make. Nice. You can make a tent with this thing. 
so this one, this particular one that is giant and cozy and fluffy was gifted to us by Marmara Import and it was my best friend on Nightwatch and I also like, okay, this is, this is gonna be personal here, you can mm. cuddle it. So next, we're next going week. north. Yeah, we are. We're going north. We are going to Sweden, the North Sea. We are going to Burr. 41 degrees of latitude and above. And this is when you need to start covering yourself up and layering up. And so, Sophie, you're the layering expert. Yeah. So give us what you got. What, okay. what is it that we need? What is the first thing that we need? I think that generally when you own a boat or you're gonna go sailing in a little colder climates, it's super important to invest in really good base layers. And that is the long pants. My personal favorite brands are Smart Wool or Icebreaker. Yep. And so what you want is something that is really going to keep you cold while also not smelling because that is also a cool feature of Merino wool. It does not smell. So have at least one pair of long pants. And then this is a very basic Merino wool top that um, this is Sophie's just brought it for her. I also grabbed a couple of these. I, I don't want to say that it's a downside, but those can be a little bit expensive because Merino wool is a bit expensive. I think that I paid $60 for this on Amazon. It's an off brand, but my original investment was with Smart Wool, mm -hmm. and I think that I paid $200 for my pair of long arms and long pants, but I never regretted it. Mm -hmm. That was six years ago. I still wear those to this day. It is such a must when you sail in little colder temperature. At this point, we are talking about item of clothing that cannot be replaced with anything else really like nothing will substitute a good base layer and then we're gonna go into oh yeah pants so I have my lighter pair of hiking pants but I also have heavier ones that I keep when the weather is too cold for the hiking pants but also not cold enough for full-on overall so one pair of pants that I particularly like is this pair of Arcteryx, but you can also find them from North Face or like any outdoor brand really. And those are a little thicker, they're super stretchy, they're comfortable and they dry really fast. They're somewhat water repellent, they block the wind. I find that sailing pants are often designed for racing. Mm -hmm and they come with like the knee pads yeah. or reinforcements in weird places. I was never interested in buying sailing mm -hmm. pants. Now we are going to talk about mid-layer jackets. Those are so good. This is the jacket that you're going to start wearing when the weather gets a little colder, when it starts to get a little windy or even a little bit rainy, but you do not want to wear the full foul weather jacket because yep. it can be a little heavy and a little bulky. This is cozy, comfortable, blocks the wind, it is lightweight, and this is something that you can wear under your foul weather gear. So this is how you layer up. And then this is this is the one that's like if it gets warmer or sorry if oh, it yeah, gets right. colder let's, let's wear it. then this is what I need. So mid mid layer jackets are those type of jackets that you put on top of your sweater but also under your fall weather gear and you can layer them up. So their feature is that they come without uh, a hood mm -hmm. because typically your fall weather jacket mm -hmm. or whatever wind jammer that you want to throw on top is gonna come with a with a hood. Yep. They block the wind, they repel the water, and they you warm oh, and so nice. Warm. So when it starts getting even more windy or even more rainy and you still don't want to put the foul weather gear, you can layer up that mid-layer jacket with a wind blocker. Make sure the wind blocker can fit a fluffy thing underneath it. And now we're ready for some light rain. Okay, and now we're getting into the real stuff. So we're gonna talk about foul weather gear. There. Annette, tell us about your path to foul weather gear. Um, my path to foul weather gear, I think it's, it's quite sad. Unfortunately, back in the day, when we were preparing for a long offshore passage, this was something that I just, I did consider it, but it was one of those last costs that just felt like so much more money to spend after having spent, you know, tens of thousands of dollars on preparing the boat and I didn't do it and guess who uh, got seasick and cold and had a miserable time in their first time when they got into a storm. Let's talk about your fall weather gear Annette. What do you have All for right. us? So, oh it's gonna be a tough one to show but 
This is this is an overall. Those are called. That's what we call the bibs. The thing with bibs is that when it's raining, when there's a lot of spray coming on top of the boat, nothing replaces that. So definitely, if you're going up for sailing in a climate that's a little bit colder or wetter, get yourself a pair of bibs. They are for sale on catamaransupply.com. And these are the ones that will really come out most often, yeah. I would say. We picked this we picked this out of our bags fairly quickly as we went to the higher latitude. Did you love having them? I absolutely loved having them. It was amazing. Never did I think that this will be like such an essential map piece of clothing for me. All right, if there right. is another thing that I'm so happy that Ryan and I invested in uh, pretty quickly after we started sailing, it is Ooh, really nice toasty. fall weather jackets. We have jackets from Musto, but this one from Gil I think is a little more affordable. So what you want to make sure of when you buy a good fall weather jacket for offshore sailing is to make sure that it comes with this like really high color and also you want it to be big so that you can wear a lot of layers under. Yeah. And you want to make sure that it's going to be comfortable when you have your life jacket on top of it. So when I was trying on for these, this is a men's medium. Yes, it looks baggy. Anything's gonna look bit. baggy at it's this It's all point. going to. That's, yes. Yeah. So the point is that I need about three layers underneath. <laughs> so when I was trying them on, you know, one of them was just like a little tight in the back and that's how you know immediately. Just go one size up. You'll be glad you did. It looks baggy. It is a bit expensive. It's probably not a jacket that you're gonna rock to the pub. Although, I mean, I look pretty good in this. <laughs> I'm too sexy for my life jacket. Too sexy for my life jacket. It's old, old jacket. Okay, and finally, more things to keep you warm and little things that I've got that I found particularly helpful are this scarf. So this is really great because you can keep it around your neck and above your nose and you can tuck it in a jacket. So I like having this uh, under my foul weather gear. It's really nice and keep my, keeps my neck warm. Nice. When you are a woman with long hair, mm -hmm. one thing that I really like instead of wearing a full hat is to wear a Band. Oh yes, I love these too. I, I have one as well. It is so nice yeah. uh, and those keep your ear yeah. warm when it's really really windy and I wear this all the time. Sometimes though it is way too cold and way too windy in which case I opt for the for the beanie. Yep. And when it gets really, really cold, so I have like several layers of pairs of gloves, mm -hmm. but in Sweden and Ooh, across yeah. the North Sea is this massive uh, pair of lobster gloves. And I know that it looks overkill, but for everybody out there like me suffering from Raynaud's syndrome, when you lose blood circulation in your finger and it hurts and you lose sensitivity in your finger, this is one way that I avoided that. Uh, in the North Sea and in the Baltic, mm -hmm. and nothing replaces that. It's amazing. I opted for this one. It says that it's waterproof and breathable. I have not tested it, thank goodness, but I have it now. Another thing that I found super helpful are heavy duty wool socks that I pop in my boots. Because again, in the North Sea and the Baltic, it's super, super cold and those keep my feet warm. All right, guys, we have literally emptied our wardrobes for this video. Uh, let's, uh, let's zoom out here a little bit. These are all the things that we have gathered over our, it's been five years now that we're saying. The last two months. <laughs> <laughs> all right, over the, at least like we've done offshore selling for three years. And these are all the things that I found help uh, when we're sailing uh, either in really warm climate mm. or in really cold climate. And I think I found a sweet spot. Yes, I am very happy with the gear that I brought. So if you have any piece of clothing or gear or personal equipment that you particularly like to have when you go offshore sailing, please leave it in the comment section for everybody to enjoy and learn from. And I hope that you get a little something out of this video. If you want to find those foul weather jackets and bibs that we talked about, they are on catamaransupply.com. Let us know if you have any questions. All right, happy sailing everyone and see you in another video. See you next time. Hope you enjoyed that episode of Sailboating with Sophie and Annette. 
Willem and I are so excited to announce our new partnership with Gill. And to celebrate, we are giving away a Gill sailing jacket. To participate, all you have to do is post a photo or video of you in your best sailing fashion. Tag and follow Ryan and Sophie Sailing and Catamaran Supply and use the hashtag MyBestSailingFashion. We cannot wait to see your submissions.